hands with all of you say amen. Amen. And shout hallelujah. We got a Bible this morning. We'll read one with us. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27. We're looking for God this morning. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27. Matthew's Gospel, Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 27. Thank God for His presence today. We can have a thought today of one place upon our heart it will be you got to wash more than your hands. You got to wash more than your hands. The Bible says in verse 19 of chapter 27, And when he sat down uh, on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, uh, Have thou nothing to do with this just man? Uh, for I have suffered many things this day uh, in a dream because of him. Uh, but the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should have the rabbits uh, and destroy Jesus. Uh, and the governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? Uh, they said, uh, Barabbas. Uh, Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus? Uh, which is called Christ, uh, they all say unto him, Let him uh, be crucified. Uh, and the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? Uh, but they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. Uh, and when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, uh, but that rather a tumult was made, uh, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, uh, saying, I am innocent of the blood uh, of this just man, uh, see ye to it. Uh, and then after all the people have said, uh, His blood be on us, uh, and all our children. Uh, then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scored Jesus, uh, he delivered him uh, to be crucified. Let us pray. Uh, uh, Father, we just come to you today in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the liberating power uh, of the Holy Spirit, God. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, that we are washed uh, in the blood of the Lamb of God. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the redeeming power uh, of that blood, not long to leave us where we were, uh, but to save us from our sins, uh, to save us from the devil's hell. Uh, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, uh, their eyes will fall off the sinner today for the God of scales. Uh, will fall off their eyes that they might see. Uh, well, I pray that they might see their undone condition before you. Uh, a just and a holy uh, and a righteous God. But uh, well, I pray that this word will go forth today for the God. Uh, and Father, that there be a need for a cleansing uh, and a purifying uh, in the house today for the God. But uh, well, I pray that you would wash over us uh, and sanctify us uh, with our word because our word is truth. But uh, well, I pray that this word will go forth. Uh, and God, I pray you to accomplish uh, great things with it. But I pray that you hide us behind the cross of Calvary. But I pray that we can preach Jesus Christ Him crucified, risen and coming in the clouds of glory. God, I pray that your people might be looking up, watching anticipating, expecting the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I pray that the day for the God will be a day like none other. Lord, will we know your presence to be so full and so rich. The joy of the Lord is our salvation and Father, I pray that we might find joy in the Redeemer, the Lord our God. Father, we thank you. We bless the name of Jesus. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And amen. 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 Everybody, please be seated. The Bible says uh, in verse 19, when he was set down on the judgment seat, uh, his wife sent unto him, saying, uh, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? Uh, for I have suffered many things this day uh, in a dream uh, the call of him. Uh, and we look in Matthew chapter 27, we find uh, that it's been a whirlwind of a night, if you will. Uh, we find that Jesus has been in the upper room with the disciples. Uh, he was there washing their feet. Uh, he took a basin of water uh, and a towel uh, and knelt down and washed each and every disciple's feet. Uh, he took the bread and the wine uh, and told them that this was a new covenant uh, in him. Uh, the bread would represent his body. Uh, the wine would represent uh, his blood. Uh, this was the new testament, uh, the new covenant uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we know that Judas had got up from the table uh, and went to betray the Lord Jesus uh, to sell him out uh, for 30 pieces of silver. Uh, Jesus sang from him with the remaining disciples uh, went out the upper room, uh, down to the kingdom back, uh, and up into the garden uh, of Gethsemane. Uh, it was there that Jesus uh, took Peter, James, and John uh, a little further than the rest. Uh, he fell down his face, uh, and he began to cry out to the Father, uh, let this cup uh, pass from me. Uh, Jesus prayed three times to the Father, uh, not my will be done, uh, but thy will be done. Uh, Jesus got up, uh, ready uh, to go to the cross. Uh, a mob uh, came with Judas uh, into the garden uh, to arrest Jesus. Uh, Judas betrayed.
saved him with the tears. They found Jesus and led him away to Caiaphas and to Annas, the high priest, where he stood in the mock trial during the night. As day began to break, they knew that they could not put him to death because they were under Roman authority. Yet they had judged him to blaspheme God because he said that he was God. But when they came to Pilate early that morning, they came with a charge of treason because he said that he was a king and there could be no king other than Caesar who was the king over the Romans. So this was the charge that they brought against Jesus as the religious leaders, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish council brought Jesus to Pilate, the governor of the region, that he might stand trial to be condemned and be charged with a crime that would be guilty of punishment of death. And Pilate had heard Jesus. Pilate, I believe, had heard of Jesus before now. I believe that Pilate, being the governor of the region, had to sit down and give out justice upon the seat of judgment throughout the land, uh, much as five or today, uh, that will report back to, to Pilate uh, about any stirring, uh, any unrest, uh, any insurrectionists uh, not might be going on uh, inside uh, of the kingdom of Rome. Uh, so we find uh, that Pilate surely knew uh, about Carmen uh, out of Nazareth, uh, who many uh, had called the Christ, uh, the one who had opened up death ears uh, and called the blind to see uh, and the lame to walk. Uh, the one who had raised Lazarus out from the dead, thank God. I believe that he had already heard about this man named Jesus. He looked at Jesus and he said, Art thou a king? And Jesus said, Thou sayest three times, just Pilate has talked with Jesus, and three times he has declared that Jesus is innocent. He's innocent. I find nothing in this man to statuate the charges that you're bringing up against him. Nothing do I find wrong with him. This man named Jesus. The Bible said in verse 18 that Pilate knew that it was the call of the envy of the Jewish religious leaders was why they had Jesus there standing before Pilate to be judged and condemned. But the Bible says in verse 19 as Pilate sat on the judgment seat that his wife sent a message to him that said have nothing to do with this just man for I have suffered many things in a dream this night concerning him for I want you to know that God will speak to us in our dreams. The Bible said in Job chapter 33 that when we are silent that God speaks into our minds, he speaks into our hearts, he wills what he would have done. God spoke in a dream to Pilate's wife and we would do well to listen to our wives today. If Pilate had only heeded the warning and the caution that came forth through the sovereignty of God to his own wife, that would tell him with this just man, this man named Jesus. Don't you charge him. Don't you condemn him. He is innocent of all that they say he does. Now listen to me. As we get into this passage of scripture, we find that Pilate has received a warning from his own wife. He knows why they have Jesus there. He knows it's malicious jealousy that has brought Jesus to him from the ruling council that day. But listen to what the Bible says. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said to them, whether the twain will ye that I release unto you, they said Barabbas. Now listen to me. It was a custom of the feast of the Passover that the governor would release one prisoner unto the people, unto the Jews. Listen to me. Pilate saw he had it all worked out. Pilate was deliberate in the fact that he was asking them, would you want me to set Barabbas free or would you want 
me huh, to set Jesus free. Amen. Because surely huh, Pilate believed huh, that they would accept Jesus huh, wholeheartedly huh, and welcomely huh, over huh, this insurrectionist, huh, this murderer, huh, this thief huh, named Barabbas. Yeah. He was a notable prisoner, the Bible said. Huh, everybody knew who Barabbas was. Everybody knew the life that Barabbas had lived. Everybody knew that he was guilty uh, of the crimes uh, for which he was being punished. Uh, and so Pilate, uh, thinking that he can get off uh, and not have to do anything uh, with Jesus, uh, not have to make a decision uh, about him one way or the other, uh, thinks that if he uh, can get them to accept Jesus, uh, then he'll be free uh, of the trouble uh, of the death. But the Bible says in verse 20, but the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude. <coughs> there were those who were religious, uh, the leaders of that day, the high priests, uh, the elders uh, of Israel uh, were there with this mob uh, that was there uh, at Pilate's Hall, uh, there at the palace, uh, and they were crying, uh, crucify him, crucify him, uh, and Pilate still the crowd. Uh, he said, when you want Barabbas, uh, or when you want uh, Jesus, uh, and the Bible said that they called them, uh, or they, uh, the Bible said in verse 20, uh, that they uh, persuaded them. Listen to me. They were easily led astray. <coughs> they were easily changed in their mind and in their heart about what they knew or felt about a man named Jesus. Because it was this same people uh, that only a few days earlier uh, couldn't get enough of Jesus. Amen. It was these same people uh, that had welcomed him into the city, uh, waving palm branches, uh, crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, uh, blessed is he uh, who comes in the name uh, of the Lord. Uh, to yesterday they loved him, uh, but today uh, they hate him. Uh, yesterday they can't get enough of him, uh, and today uh, they want uh, to crucify him. Uh, listen to me. Uh, such a fickle people after people that are there with the religious leaders of that day. Amen. Can I tell you why they're fickle? Because they have opinions and they do not have convictions about who Jesus Christ really is. When you have opinions about who Jesus Christ really is, your opinions can be quickly changed by the persuasion of those who are leading you and often lead you astray. But when you have convictions that are about Jesus Christ, you can stand on the solid rock. Our opinions are nothing but shift and sand that will leave us flat upon our face. But our convictions, my friends, are rock steady because they're founded on the ancient of ages, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, and His name is Jesus Christ, the Lord. Uh, 
Jesus uh, would not do. Do you think Jesus uh, is out drinking and getting drunk? Do you think Jesus is smoking dope and popping pills? Do you think Jesus is fornicating uh, and whoremongering uh, and setting up a computer uh, looking at pornography? Uh, do you think Jesus uh, is an adulterer uh, running around? Uh, do you think that Jesus uh, would do those things uh, if Jesus uh, would not do those things? Uh, then there's no reason uh, under God's son uh, that you and I uh, and those who are baptized uh, into his raised to walk in the newness of life to even have a part in those things. That's not who we are. That's not where our identity lies. Is Jesus cheating? Is Jesus stealing? Is Jesus a busybody? Is Jesus gossiping about people? Is Jesus running somebody down? No. Jesus never had. He never did. And he never will. And neither should you and I. They were persuaded. And too many times, and this, this is what the sad, tragic truth of it all is, these people were persuaded by those that they thought was going the right way. They were persuaded by those that they thought were doing the right thing. They were persuaded by those that were in a position of authority as the high priest and the elders. And they said, well, they say he did that. They say he did this. They say he did that. They must be right. So let's follow them. Then you better be real sure about who you follow. Because the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 5 that hell enlarges herself and her mouth is without measure. You know why? Because more people are going to hell than they are to heaven. <coughs> and the sad truth and tragedy of it all is that they're following some people who are telling them, I know the way. Follow me. But those same people are calling evil good and good evil. They're calling bitter sweet and sweet bitter. They're putting darkness for light and light for darkness. The, the horrors of hell are going to be bad enough physically. But can you imagine the horrors of hell? The mental anguish of hearing you saying your family, your husband, your wife, your children right there around you in the torment of the flames of hell saying, hey, Mama, I thought you knew the way. I thought you was carrying me to the land of promise. I thought we was going to go home and be with Jesus one day. I didn't know we was going to end up here. I didn't know or I would have followed you this way. Amen. It's time to quit lying about it and get honest about it. We got too many people hiding stuff. Too many people are hiding the way of life, hiding a different lifestyle, covering up with a master religion, covering up with a code of religion. I'll tell you today, Jesus said in John's Gospel, chapter 15, and in verse 22, he said, If I had not come speak to them, they had not sinned. But because I came and spoke to them, they have no cloak to cover it up. He said, I revealed it. God is the revealer. You don't believe it? Ask David. He sat on it for years, refused to repent of it, refused to come out of that sin of where he committed adultery and Bathsheba, lied and committed murder. But a year later, God sent Nathan the prophet, and he looked at David and said, Thou art the man, because God is a revealer of hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to me. It's not. It, people say, well, uh, He's an adulterer, or she's a fornicator, or he's a drunkard, or she's a goathead, or he's a meth mouth. Or, listen to me, that, 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 ain't even, that, ain't even, that ain't even the issue. They are those things because their heart is not right with God. They are those things because their heart is bent that way. 
If their heart was right with God, they would cease to be those things. But because their heart is not right with God, out of the issues of the heart, springing for life, the life you live tells me what's in your heart with God. This ain't popular, but that's all right. Because there's too many people that have just washed their hands. Too many people uh, that have walked away from responsibility uh, and accountability uh, and said, uh, well, uh, I, I just got an opinion. Let me tell you something. You better know black from white, uh, and you know better know the letters that are written in red. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what you better be standing on. Too many people say, well, I don't want to say nothing about it. Uh, so I, I got friends that might be doing that or living that kind of lifestyle. Uh, so I just ain't going to say nothing about it. Uh, I just let them live like they want to live. Uh, let me tell you something, my friend. Uh, Jesus uh, wouldn't let them live like they want to live. Uh, and if Jesus in you, uh, then you need to tell the truth. Uh, because the truth uh, is the only thing uh, that has the power uh, to set them free from God. Jesus, uh, the Christ. 
And the Bible says uh, in verse 23, uh, and the governor said, Wow, what evil hath he done? Uh, but they cried out the more, saying, uh, Let him be crucified. Uh, when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, uh, but that rather Como was made, uh, he took water, washed his hand before the multitude, uh, saying, I am innocent of the blood uh, of this just person. Uh, see ye to it. Uh, then answered all the people and said, uh, His blood be on us uh, and on uh, our children. Now listen to me. When Pilate took that basin uh, that had that water in it, Pilate was doing something uh, that those religious leaders uh, knew exactly what he was doing. Because in Deuteronomy 21, uh, God was serious uh, about the shedding uh, of innocent blood. He told Moses to the elders of Israel, uh, he said, if you find a man uh, that has been murdered uh, and his body left in the field uh, and you do not know uh, who has murdered him, uh, he said, you take measure uh, of that man uh, and where that body is uh, and you measure back uh, to the cities that are around it. Uh, he said, the closest city that is there uh, is to take a heifer uh, into a rough valley, uh, cut her neck off, uh, and the elders of that city uh, are to wash their hands uh, with water uh, over the neck uh, of that heifer uh, so that God will not bring judgment uh, upon them uh, because innocent blood uh, has been shed. They said, let his blood uh, be on us uh, and on uh, our children. Listen to me. When they said that, they brought upon themselves as a nation and as a people, the greatest curse that could be upon a people on the face of this earth. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? The Jews brought curse upon themselves, and for the last 2,000 years, they have been more persecuted than any nation on the face of this earth. And it's all because of the innocent blood that was laid to their charge. When Peter preached uh, in Acts chapter 3 uh, to the religious readers, uh, he said, you uh, killed uh, the author of life. He said, you uh, put him on the cross. Uh, you uh, nailed him uh, between the heavens uh, and the earth. Uh, and they tried to act like uh, they didn't have anything uh, to do with it. And Pilate's standing there washing his hands. Listen to me, my friend. Pilate fell that if he could just wash his hands, that the guilty stain would be washed away. He just felt like if he could get his hand into that water, and that water would wash over his hand, that the guilt that he felt deep down in his soul would be satisfied and dispelled. Can I tell you something this morning? You can wash your hand with all the water in God's ocean, every river, every pond, and every stream, and you'll not get over the guilt of the innocent blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary. That Jesus Christ uh, laid down his life uh, for my sins uh, and for your sins. Uh, it takes more uh, than the water, for God. Uh, it takes the blood uh, of the sacrificial uh, Lamb of God uh, who was slain for the sins uh, of the world. Uh, but for uh, the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, there would be uh, no remission of sins, uh, no forgiveness of ten sins. Uh, it takes more uh, than just uh, the water, for God. Too many people. That when it comes to what must I do with Jesus, you know what they say? You ever try to talk to anybody about Jesus? You ever try to testify or witness anybody about Jesus? They say, oh preacher, I, I go to church for where it's old, so what's that got They say, oh preacher, I, I, I read my Bible, preacher. Oh, oh, oh preacher. I pray to God every day. Oh, I, I, what about Jesus? There is only one door of salvation. There is only one bread of life. There is only one way, truth, and life. And His name is Jesus Christ. Listen to me. If you're going to heaven, it's because 
Jesus loves you, laid his life down for your sins on the cross at Calvary, was nailed between the heavens and the earth, and it wasn't the fact that the Roman soldiers, no, the Jewish religious leaders kept him on the cross. He loved us enough that he said it was finished. He gave up the ghost and he died, great God. He said, no man takes my life. He said, I lay my life down and I have the power to take it up again. It takes more than a church membership. It takes more than a baptism in the water. It takes the blood of the Lamb of God. That's the only thing that has the power to renew. The only thing. You can't get there without it. You're not a child of God unless you've been redeemed. You can try every way you know how to remove the evil of the fact that you and I are just like the rats. Amen. Just like the rats. You say, oh, I'm better than that. I don't care how good you are. You ain't good enough to go to God's heaven except you repent of your sins and come under the blood of Jesus Christ. And then you can be forgiven of your sins. Amen. Yes. And God to give you a clear title to a man.
we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word, God. Father, we thank you that you have made a provision, God. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you made provision through the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, today for the God that he hung on the blood and died in our place. And Father, if we just call upon you, God, we know that you love us just like we are, God. We don't have to put on false pretenses, God. Father, we don't have to act like we're something that we're not. Father, you love us just like we are. But, Father, you're committed to change us through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Because, Father, you hate sin. Father, that's the truth of the message. We can't change the message. Don't want to change the message. Father, we've got to stand true to the message. We've got to have convictions about the message. We can't waver in the message. Father, help us, God, to love like Jesus loved. But to see stand, God, and to forsake it, repent of it, and to follow you. Father, I pray if anybody in this place, God, has been through the taxing of just washing their hands, to try to remove the guilt of going from one day to the next, one week to the next, of coming to church on Sunday, and it all be about you, but living a life on Monday that's all about them. God, I pray you help them. Father, I pray if anybody's living a lifestyle, God, that's not glorifying and it does not honor you. Father, I pray that you break the chains that bind them. I pray that you set the captive free, God. Father, I pray that through the liberating power of the Holy Spirit and the blood of the Lamb of God, that the yokes would be broken, the bondages would fall off, God. And Father, they would step out of sin and walk in the light of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you'd help us for God, your church, your people, God, to live like you live, to say yes to righteousness and no to sin, to live above sin, not a slave to sin. Father, you know our hearts. You know those things that are hidden. You know the things that husbands are hiding from their wives. You know the things that wives are hiding from their husbands. You know the things that parents are hiding from their children and the things that children are hiding from their parents. Father, your word says that you are a discerner of thoughts and intent to the heart through your word. I pray everything hidden will be revealed. And I pray that forsake it and cling to the cross of Jesus Christ. Father, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Amen. amen.